Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society where once again we're going to do our lucky dip random pick from the card catalogue with the white gloves of destiny. But today we have a very special guest who's going to be doing the pick from far away. It is one of our Patreon supporters here on Objectivity. Look who it is. Hello. <laughs> it's Alice. Alice, give us your quick summary, tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm a New Zealander living in London for the last six years. Um, I test software in my day job and by night I like music and writing. Did you say you're a New Zealander? I am a New Zealander, sorry. Oh, right oh, hang on, <laughs> we seem to have a bad connection here. No, no. Even, we're going to let you do it anyway. <laughs> so Keith is going to choose a card for you and then a second backup card. Any, any preferences, anything you're hoping we might pull? I do like a little bit of geography. I'm, I'm a bit of a traveller, so that would be quite fun. Um, also, anything just general geekery, science. Okay. Well, you've come to the right place, <laughs> virtually. This is a first. I, I've never been someone's virtual hands before. Yep. Can we start in the bottom corner of that left-hand side there? Bottom that corner of the left? Yeah. Uh, Down here? Know, so on, on the other side of that section. Other side of this section, so here. That one there, that's it. Yep, good. Uh, Open that drawer. Please. Oh. Yeah, here we go. Let's go right to the back. <laughs> right. right to the back, say when? When. All when. Right. Okay. What have we got? Ah, so we have the sun's parallax deduced from observations of the recent transit of Venus, 1772. It's in Latin. How's your Latin? I haven't studied it for about 15 years, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> this right. is good. All right. Do you want to do a second pick? Where do you want, to, right. where do you want to go second time? Uh, Middle of the right hand side, maybe. Middle, right hand side, here? That's the one. That's the one. Right at the front third, maybe somewhere there? Yep, say yeah. when. When. <laughs> when! So this is suggested improvements in the miner's safety lamp. Good bit of engineering there. So, so Alice, we're going to go downstairs we're, and we're going to find out what you picked and we're going to show it to everyone and we're going to show it to you. So. Uh, oh. Thanks for joining us. Okay. And thank you for supporting us on Patreon as well. Anytime, buddy. Has it all paid off now? Does it feel worthwhile? It definitely feels worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. So we'll be in touch and let you know how we go. We're going to go downstairs and see how Alice has done. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Paper 283. That's the first one. So we're on almost, almost. 283. Here it is. A deduction of the quantity of the sun's parallax from the comparison of the several observations of the late transit of Venus made in Europe with that made in George Island. So they're using mm. the transit from two different parts of Earth. That's right, yeah, this is the whole point of observing the transit of Venus, so they can try and calculate that one astronomical unit based on the angles between uh, the astronomical bodies. But there we go. In Latin, no pictures, but a few numbers here. So we should be able to find the calculation, you would have thought. Oh yeah, it goes on. Here right. we go. Yes, it's longitude, latitude. See, Alice is the engineer. She'll be right. She'll be mm. well into all this. Page six, page seven, page eight, page nine. Mm -hmm. and that's it. No pictures. It's in Latin. I mean, it is a transit of Venus, and that is a big That's deal. That's good. Yeah. That is good. I mean, it was a major scientific endeavour, so it's part of a bigger story. Let's see how Alice did with her second pick. A series called Miscellaneous Correspondence. I like the sound of miscellaneous. Yeah, I mean, Miscellaneous Correspondence is, is good. There's all kinds of letters in there, but it's very much a, a, a potluck. Is it, is it going to be a good one? Oh, this is one of my favourite rows. Mmm. So here we go, Brady. That's a nice fat volume. Oh, yeah. 1844 to 1850. What's our number, Keith? So it's letter number 289 in that sequence. We're in the 200s now. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a right old mess. Look at that. Mm. Let's see who read that one. Ah, Northampton, so he's president of the Royal Society. So that's written by a president of the Royal Society? Yeah. 289. Oh, nice substantial letter. 18th of June. Mm hmm. That's my birthday. There you go. And it's 1849, Sunderland near the sea. So the letter is to Dr. Roger. This is Peter Mark Roger. He's one of the Royal Society secretaries of this period. Roger, is in Roger? As in Roger's thesaurus, yeah. Oh, wow. At a time like the present, when the attention of Parliament is likely to be directed to the frequent recurrence of accidents in coal mines, it's very important for the northeast of England, of course, that's where they're mining coal, from explosive gases. What I wish to allude to is that of rendering the present safety lamp 
of Sir Humphrey Davy. The Humphrey Davy safety lamp? Nonsense, George Stevenson and various other people's safety lamp, but Davy got the credit anyway, never mind. Just so you know, Keith's got a bit of a bead, his bonnet Moving about, on. about who invented the safety lamp. Yeah. He always thinks it's people from his hometown that invented everything. <laughs> And this, I think, might be affected by having the wire gauze made of some metal, such as silver, not liable to oxidation after having been red hot, as the present Davy is. The famous Davy lamp. Have you still got your Davy lamp? Yeah, yeah, we still got the Davy lamp, the gauze. So the, that's what he's talking about. Should that, I grab that it? Gauze on there. Yeah, if you can find right? it, that's fine. Keith, you have to give me a job. I know where everything is. Hold it from the bottom, Brady, because that glass will come off. There we go. So you've seen this on objectivity before. This is a very special item here at the Royal Society. And we see the gauze that's being talked about. Mm -hmm. And the lamp flame is inside the gauze, isn't it, to stop explosions happening? That's right, so the flame can't propagate across the gauze. It heats up, but the explosion won't happen. It won't ignite the gases and the coal dust and gaseous mix on the other side. So the letter is talking about replacing that with a different type of gauze, with something that won't oxidise. I have been informed by Pittman that the Davy, after having been frequently red hot, becomes very weak in the gauze wire. And he's saying when these things get hot, they start rusting and collapsing and becoming less mm, integrity. Yeah. Let's make them from something different. There is another substance which I have sometimes thought might be very proper as a shield or substitute for wire gauze, and that is asbestos. Asbestos. Excellent mm. idea. Very good. Let's yes. get a whole bunch of asbestos down in the mine. No drawbacks there. As this substance is almost indestructible by flame, do you think, honoured sir, that it is possible to have it wrought into a substance like cloth and have minute apertures for the transmission of air? I would be proud indeed to hear from you. I think that's a really good letter. That's brilliant. So he's proposing replacing the metal gauze with like a an asbestos cloth mm -hmm. with lots of holes punched in it. That's right. Because the asbestos deals better with fire. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, don't know if anybody tried it. Perhaps objectivity viewers can tell us. I'm going to say it. Alice. It's a good one. Well done. So we've got a bit of a postscript because Alice works in London and after hey. work <laughs> she's popped in to come and have a look at the stuff. So we're going to see what she thinks. We've got pages and pages of this transit of Venus parallax thing. You can have a look at that at your, at your leisure. <laughs> Here's where things went better. Got a bit we enjoyed exciting. this one. Okay. You, you were off to a great start because that's my birthday. Shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take first, two. First ever swear word on objectivity. <laughs> yeah. We have liberal use of swear words in our country. <laughs> this Sorry. Is, this is why we don't let civilians on the show. Yeah. So he's written in and said, look, I've got my ear to the ground. I've been hearing some problems with Davy's lamp and I've got some suggestions about making the gauze out of something different. Cool. I have sometimes thought that might be very proper as a shield or substitute and that is asbestos as this substance is almost indestructible <laughs> by flame. So uh, you, you, you now have an asbestos safety lamp. Good. Yeah. More so. things to kill you. Yay. Yeah. All of that just says to me how unsafe mining was yep. at the end so of the day. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We're going to award you the coal slips. Oh. Keith, Keith made a little joke. Oh, I love it. So those are for you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. You can even have the white gloves. Oh, no way. That perform so well <laughs> as Thank a souvenir. Thank you very much. That is incredible. They are quite powerful, so be okay. careful how you use them. I'll, I'll wield them safely, yeah, don't, don't worry. Don't go too close to any card catalogues. No. This is a collection of correspondence around Isaac Newton and a certain Leibniz. Yeah. From what I know of it, Leibniz and Newton both invented calculus at roughly the same time. And then, I mean, he's going to correct me when I'm wrong here. <laughs> he's already slightly scowled at me. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, they were generally all right about it for a little while, but then Newton decided, no, he wanted the credit. Mm. And so he wrote a series of letters to discredit Leibniz. That's right. So what they did was they gathered together relevant correspondence, as evidence, of course, because they're scientists, in order to establish Newton's priority in the invention.